can't believe George is off on a play date with his mates. Why? He can't be working all the time. Dogs need a break too. Yeah, but it's the last episode of the season. Oh yeah, that's sad. At least Darcy's turned up for the gig. Ha! He just wants to make sure he sees himself on telly. <laughs> well, I hope all of you at home have grabbed a cuppa and getting ready to watch our last episode of the season. And your pooches are with you too, so they can learn a tip or two as well. Maybe George is tuning in with his mates wherever he is. Maybe. Many people don't realise, but as our dogs get older, their diets need to change to ensure they're getting the right amount of nutrients and support for their ageing muscles and bones. Mick, at what age should we start to consider doing this for our dogs? It's bad news, mate. As you get older, you need to start thinking about health concerns. So your joints, your muscle, your tissue, your brain, and especially your weight health as well. So dogs are considered mature adults, primarily at the age of seven. Now that's if they spend the bulk of their adult life under 25 kilos. But dogs that actually are over 25 kilos become mature adults at the age of five. Wow, that's young. It is young. Most dogs will spend the bulk of their lifetime in their mature adult years. Right. Well, one of the glow food range is mature chicken. So what are some of the key ingredients in that? So one of the key differences in the mature adult diet is that it's got a bigger kibble. And that's really important, so we make sure we look after the dog's teeth as they get into their later years. And then we really want to make sure we look after their joints and their muscles and their bones. So Glow's mature adult is enriched in glucosamine and chondroitin sulfate, which is really, really important. And then we've got beet pulp and chicory as well, which actually helps the dog stay fuller for longer. Because mm -hmm. with an older dog, you really want to make sure there's not a lot of pressure on the kidneys. So low in salt and make sure that it's really calorie controlled so you don't end up with any weight problems down the track. Right. So that so many owners don't realise that their dogs are overweight. Now, how much of an impact has that on their lives? It has a huge impact. I mean, we generally see most dogs ha start to have their issues around the age of six and seven plus, and that's generally attributed because maybe the diet they've been on for their adult years has not been the best. Mm. We definitely know there's a lot of problems around weight. Almost half the dog population in Australia is now considered to be overweight or obese. So really making sure that the diet is lower in protein and lower in fat so you don't have those weight challenges moving on into its later life stage. And in particular, really low in salt so that you don't have a lot of kidney problems moving on. Much like ourselves. Absolutely. Any other tips for owners of mature dogs? So it's really important that people are comfortable with the fact that their dogs are gonna start becoming mature adults at the age of five or seven. So making sure they keep them fit and active and feed them a really good quality diet is really important. But with any diet transition, when you're moving from adult into mature adult, make sure you do it gradually again. Give yourself a couple of weeks to get the dog used to the fact that there's been a change in its diet. Fantastic. Well, speaking about keeping up an active lifestyle, if you'd like to learn more about the Glow Food Range, take your pet for a walk down to your local pet stock and ask one of their friendly staff members to give you some advice on caring for a mature dog. Gum disease, known as periodontitis, is the number one cause of poor dental health in both humans and our furry friends. Periodontitis occurs five times more often in dogs than in humans due to dog saliva being more basic as well as a lack of daily brushing. Dogs instinctively hide signs of periodontitis and often by the time signs are visible, the damage has already been done. And we find that our faithful companions have been suffering pain for some time. Symptoms include bleeding or red gums, blood on toys, bad breath, loose teeth, head shyness and excessive salivation, chewing on one side or problems chewing up food, or nasal discharge. To help assess the health of your dog's teeth, an oral examination is performed by your vet. If there is some plaque buildup or any of the symptoms that I just mentioned, dental x-rays and further examination under general anaesthetic will be recommended. When it comes to treatment, a dental scale and polish under general anaesthetic is performed to remove plaque and tartar. Loose teeth or those with painful decay through to the sensitive pulp may need to be removed. As with anything, prevention is always better than cure. So to help prevent gum disease in your dog, it's important to brush their teeth daily. You can buy a finger brush or other dog specific brush and toothpaste. It's also important to identify gum disease early. So yearly dental examinations under general anaesthetic are recommended. In addition to brushing and examinations, 
but definitely not as a substitute on their own. There are specific chews, dental dry food and water additives that can be used to prevent plaque hardening or to actually physically remove the plaque. Try to avoid hard or inappropriately sized raw bones, cooked bones, nylon bones or hard animal parts like hooves as these can all lead to fractures in teeth. In severe cases, periodontitis contributes to heart, liver and kidney disease, as well as jaw fractures. So keeping your dog's teeth in good condition is super important. Fortunately, dental illness is an optional add-on with HIF's top cover, Pet Insurance. Visit their website to find out more. Dogs that are aggressive to other dogs or people aren't necessarily bad dogs looking for a fight. Aggression and reactivity can come from fear, frustration, stress, genetics, all of the above and much more. Now Trish, you've been working with the three-year-old rescue staffy Ticker and his owner Derek. Hopefully though, so that it's the forever home that we're going to get out of this outcome. <laughs> so what's been going on Derek? Oh well, basically he's a very good dog at home, mm. but as soon as we take him out on the lead out on the street, he gets very anxious, mm -hmm. especially when he sees a, another cat or a dog, he basically wants to get to them somehow, and okay. we haven't let him do that yet. <laughs> okay, good to hear. Now Trish, what do you think's going on there? A little bit hard to tell. I think sometimes a little bit of typical staffy behaviour. They mm -hmm. do tend to react to things, especially things that move. Um, and we don't know tickets pass, so we're going to sort of treat it like we would maybe a fear aggression um, mm -hmm. case. Um, and that just means creating some distance and rewarding the dog for, for good decisions. Um, when we first worked with Ticker, he wasn't taking any treats, so we used distance as a, uh, as a reward. Okay. Hopefully today, though, he'll be able to take some treats and we can use some different techniques. All right, now that is why we have the Dalmatian. Tammy here because Tammy is actually our uh, trigger dog and the whole purpose of this is we don't want to see Tico reacting to Tammy that's the whole purpose of this training. Exactly a, a good training session is a boring training session so Sorry. you don't see any reactivity <laughs> if it's done correctly mm. and that's what we're aiming for today as well. Yes and that's what we're aiming for in your life in general. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> All right shall we get going are you ready to go Tammy? You ready to trigger off Ticker? Let's go find Ticker. <laughs> Let's do this. Good. Let him have a little bit of a sniff because he's only just entered the area. So he can just sort of relax and familiarise with, with the area and all the smells. Don't go up too close so the trigger dog's back there. So just hang around here for now. Just let him have a bit more of a sniff. Alright, now when you're ready to go up to threshold, I'm going to come with you. And then I want you to take control of that lead. And we're going to wait. Wait for him to make a, a good response so he can look at the trigger dog. He's going to then make a, make a choice <laughs> on what he wants to do and then you're going to mark it with good and you're going to give him the distance. All right, so let's walk up to trigger point or to choice point. Just stop, nice and calm. Yep, come in, a bit more. In a straight line, stop there, let him look. He can look and yes, oh, good. quite relaxed at that point so I would say he's still quite under threshold there yep. uh, but that's that's a good starting point so we can then sort of move in a bit closer so we're going to stop there he's allowed to look just get a bit closer to him so you can actually see and good let's go yeah he's, he's responding well to good it's nice so here's what's going to happen now we're going to up the ante a little bit for him and he's going to look at the trigger yeah he's going to look away yeah we're going to wait for him to look again yeah and then look away and mark the second one. Okay. So I want him now to keep his eyes a little bit longer on the trigger and look at it. Yep. And digest all the information. Yep. And then, and then we're going to take him away. So we're just going to increase the level of difficulty a little bit for him. Yep. Yep. And we're going to just keep him at that level because I think that's a good working level at this yep. point. Um, and we'll go from there. Okay. Let's take your time. Look at that. My reaction. Fabulous. Stop there. Look. Good. Another little look. And another. So he's looking now. Good. One more look. One more look away. Good. That was all a good experience <laughs> for Ticker. Good. So Derek, that seemed to go really well. How are you feeling? Oh, very pleased. I said he would, I thought he'd react as soon as he mm. came through the gate. It's really good that we got halfway up the field without him 
uh, getting overexcited. So very pleased with his progress. Yeah, good. And Trish, so just working on that next? Yeah, we'll continue working on closing that distance. I think I saw more frustration and wanting to actually go up and interact. Um, and I think we'll work on that so he gets up to there calmly. Um, we'll continue working on that. But no, I was very happy with what he did today. That's right. He does want to go for a swim. So it's really important that you make sure that you get the right experienced trainer. <laughs> if you have a dog that gets excited, like Tika does, aggression or any kind of reactivity. So to find out more, visit the NDTF website. All right, you can go for a swim. <laughs> yes, you're allowed now. <laughs> See ya. See ya. I don't blame him. I'm hot. I'm going for a swim too. Yeah, Come on, let's go. go. <laughs>but I actually think that really underestimates the number of overweight dogs in Australia. So what are we doing wrong? Most people are using both human and dog treats and they're just feeding them way too much and too often. It's really important to feed a dog treat and to limit it to about 10% of your calorie intake in a day. Right. So just to give you an idea, Vitapet treats have about the same energy as about 100 grams of dry dog food. So that will give you an idea of about how much to feed. It's a really great idea to use the feeding guide on the pack. That should generally give you a good idea of how much to feed. And if you're feeding more than one treat type in a day, then you obviously need to adjust down how much you're feeding. I also look for meat as the first ingredient and I try and limit the fat to about less than about 10 to 12% of the product. All right, so what should we be doing instead? Well, when I'm training, what I do is make a mental note of how much I've taken to train um, Tali, and then I break them down into smaller pieces. That's so important in small dogs and puppies where it's really easy to give them a large volume of yeah. treats in a short time. It's important to make sure you choose a treat that's appropriate for the size and the age of the, your dog. And usually the first time I feed a treat, I make sure I supervise the dog as well. Common sense should tell you that a big dog like a Labrador can have a lot more treats in a day than a small dog like Eddie. If I want to train more than once a day, then I adjust the amount of treats that I use for that. And I need to also to adjust it then if I'm going to leave a treat when I go out um, to keep them occupied. Now a dog Eddie size, for instance, um, the maximum amount I would want to feed in a day of these milky sticks is two. Right. and the maximum in an entire day of this uh, chicken tender is one treat only. So you can see for a small dog, it's actually a really, really small amount. Yeah. So if my puppy's overweight or obese, does that mean no more treats? Definitely not. It's still fine to feed treats. Just need to think about how many treats you're feeding and how much food you're feeding as well. Dogs are as social as us, so it's also really important to make sure that uh, lots of people aren't giving them lots of additional treats. Well, it looks like we need to pay more attention to the ingredients list on the back of the packet, not just for ourselves, but the dogs too. Absolutely. If you're looking for more healthy treats, Vitapet can be found at Petstock and other leading pet stores and great supermarkets. Well, Eddie, you're looking trim and taut. I think you've earned some treats. Let's go get some. For discerning pet owners, it has become increasingly difficult to know what establishments openly welcome our furry companions. If you're planning a holiday and want to take your pet along for the ride, then head to takeyourpet.com.au. Take Your Pet provides animal owners with a simple, easy to navigate solution for searching, finding and choosing the next adventure with their four-legged friends. With over 12,000 pet-friendly businesses on their database, you're spoiled for choice and will easily be able to find the best pet-friendly establishments for your needs. From accommodation listings and restaurants to things to do and see, Take Your Pet is a leading online destination for all things pet-friendly travel in Australia. For those looking for an escape on the doorstep of Sydney, then Dry Ridge Estate is perfect. This stunning boutique vineyard is nestled in the heart of the Megalong Valley of the Blue Mountains. The venue boasts a cellar door and accommodation, all with the best views the mountain has to offer. Dry Ridge Estate is only two hours drive from Sydney, which makes the vineyard very appealing for both weekends and day trips. 
Drift with a tranquil tide at Reflections Holiday Park's Mooney Beach. Just 10 minutes from Coffs Harbour and a stone's throw from the fishing and surfing haven of Mooney Beach, this dog-friendly caravan park is a welcoming and serene oasis on the Coffs Coast. Take the dog for an early morning beach walk. Watch the kids as they paddle in the safe waters of the estuary or hire a kayak for an explore. Then when the sun goes down, gather the crew around the campfire and prepare to do it all again. <coughs> For those of you in Brisbane looking for a tasty meal in a peaceful backdrop, check out the Encircle Riverstock Community Cafe. Located in the Pine Rivers Neighbourhood Centre in Launton, North Brisbane, the cafe offers scenic views and has a purpose-built playground just metres away from the dining area. They also welcome dogs on lead in the outdoor area so your pooch can come along and play too. For more pet-friendly accommodation and places to go, visit takeyourpet.com.au. <laughs> Assistance dogs play a vital role in helping people with illnesses, special needs and disabilities. Whilst we're used to hearing about seeing eye dogs, we're about to visit another organisation, Smart Pups, to find out what they do. Smart Pups assistance dogs are individually trained to provide assistance to a special needs child, which is why they have such a high price tag. They have special task specific training so they can assist a young person from the age of three and up to handle day to day routines and events. These dogs are more than just a pet, so if you see an assistance dog in public, they are most likely working, so avoid trying to pat or distract them, no matter how adorable they are. Trish, who do Smart Pups help? Um, we train assistance dogs for special mm -hmm. needs children under the age of 18. Uh, we train autism assist, mm -hmm. uh, seizure assist, uh, mobility assist and also diabetes alert dogs. And how do these guys differ to some of the other assistance dogs that we see? We train them specifically for children under 18 mm -hmm. which is uh, like an early intervention therapy. Um, uh, we're one of the few organisations that do this. And there's some different breeds. Hercules isn't your standard lab here, is he? No, he's, uh, Hercules is a um, Labradoodle. He's trained training to be a mobility assistance dog for a little girl in a wheelchair. Uh, we have uh, Labradors, Golden Retrievers, uh, but the Labradoodles are for children who've had allergies. Of course. And how long does it take to train up one of these guys? Uh, we start training at eight weeks of age and um, they uh, go through to about 14, 15 months old, depending on, on their uh, maturity. And it's not cheap, is it? <laughs> no, um, it does cost um, between twenty-seven and $30,000 to train these assistance dogs. There's a lot of work goes into it, including uh, public access work as well as the task work. So, Vali, how did Jagger come to be in your lives? Um, well, I did some research on the internet um, to see how I could help my daughter with her autism and one of the first things that popped up was information about autism assistance dogs and how much they help autistic children. So I contacted Smart Pups to find out you know, how much a dog is and yes. what the process is. I found out that I needed to raise $25,000 so I then started a GoFundMe page nice. and from there a friend of mine managed to get us onto Triple M mm -hmm. and Chris from Big Dog Pet Foods um, heard about Akira um, and how sick, you know, she is yeah. and um, he decided to help us and donate um, an assistance dog to her. Oh, wonderful. And how has Jagger really impacted your lives and changed it? Um, well, it's very difficult to put into words because you know, he's just amazing. He's an amazing help. He has managed to calm Akira right down and provides reassurance to her when we're in public. It's a lot easier to go out to the shops with him because he stays with her and provides her with comfort if she gets overstimulated mm. uh, by lights and noises. And he's a great companion for her. I think that all children with mid to severe disabilities really need a dog like Jagger because it just, it changes your life and it's, it's changed our lives. We can be a part of society now. Yeah. We have more independence, whereas before, you know, it was a lot easier to just, just to stay home. Yes, um, yeah. it be hard. Yeah. It just gives you out more and look how, you know, it's just wonderful to see, isn't it, how they do get to be in each other's world. Oh, yeah, it's lovely. Best friends. Yeah, we're so lucky, <laughs> so lucky. And, you know, um, without Big Dog Pet Foods, you know, it would be, um, you know, a very hard life for all of us. Mm. And, 
you can see, you know, her quality of life has improved dramatically with him. She gets very sick um, with her epilepsy yes. because she has um, a genetic disorder called Syngap1, mm -hmm. very rare. Um, and she might not ever speak. Okay. So, yeah. So they get to communicate together. Yeah. Oh, thank you. She has a friend. Yeah, exactly. We all need a friend, don't we? Yeah. <laughs> thank you, Vardy, for telling us your okay. story. Thank you. <laughs> if you'd like to make a donation to help find this little smart pup a home, visit the Smart Pups website. And remember, if you're buying the big dog pet foods, you're also helping. Now, Alex, you're going to come home, and I'm sure Darcy's going to love it. Yes, you're going to come with us. Yeah, come on. Let's go. Would you like to win a Pawesome prize pack valued at $3,000 for you and your furry friend? Thanks to our wonderful partners, one lucky viewer is going to win a $500 pet stock gift voucher, a year's supply of Glow Dog Food, $500 worth of Big Dog Pet Products, a year's supply of Vita Pet Treats, $200 worth of Gumi Pet Products, and for you, an amazing $500 massage and wellbeing voucher from HIF. All you have to do is tell us the name of a dog that has appeared in one of our Pooches at Play segments and why your pooch deserves to win. It's that easy. We also have 10 $50 pet stock gift vouchers with a Take Your Pet Travel Pack to give away for runners up. To enter, visit the Pooches at Play website. Well, Lara, that's it for another season. They just go by so quickly. I know, and I feel like there's so much more that we could be talking about still. We should shoot another season. Yeah, and maybe we should do some other pet stories, you know? Horses, birds, cats even. What do you think, Cats? <laughs> well, I've seen how Darcy is around cats and it's not pretty. And I'm allergic to cats, so that won't be very funny or entertaining. Well, I'll take care of the cats then. Thank you for joining us this series. We hope you enjoyed it and we hope to see you again soon. Until next season, make sure you check out our website and sign up to our e-news so you get lots of tips and information on all things dogs. See you next time.